Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I've been actually working on the outside studio out in the heat and the humidity and everything on there, getting ready for the season. I've actually done some things that reduce the amount of wires that I have going out of there, less things that are plugged in, and more controls for the system. I've actually got another mixer out there, the podcaster, so that way... I can plug all the mics in directly instead of having all the cables going through. Trying to streamline everything because the season, it's three weeks, 21 days. 21 days, one hour, 17 minutes and 30 seconds from right now. And we are scouting the Eagles versus um, New England. We're going to play both of those teams. We're going to play actually the Eagles twice. I know that the Eagle trolls out there will say I'm being mean to Philly 500, but I checked in with them. I said, hey, Philly, you stream tonight. I said, you know it. I said, do you mind if I go ahead and troll? He's like, dude, have at it. In fact, tonight you're going to see something new from Philly 500. I'm going to let you trolls know because I've talked to him about his studio. He's actually got a, when you see it tonight, it's not going to be quite so quite up in your face. He's actually got his Mevo camera. He's actually got three Mevo cameras. He's actually got it so it's a wide angle he's got a scoreboard on top it actually looks really really nice so shout out to him on that one he's got two more cameras i think he's gonna have the kiss my ass camera let's hope it's a widescreen it's better be a widescreen camera but anyway um We'll be live streaming, so hopefully we'll see you guys in here tonight, and we'll be talking about what we see with Jalen Hurts and the rest of the Eagles. Now, for our Cowboys, I'm sitting here in my mind thinking, and I've made a few phone calls and stuff to try and figure out what's really going on. Now, here's the thing. I, a little birdie told me that when they looked at Dak Prescott's injury, and if they thought it was significant, which has been you know, going on you know, several weeks here, that if they thought it was something serious, they would have done surgery on it right away, got it fixed so he'd be back. There was no need to do surgery. But this is kind of like, say, a hamstring injury. The thing about a hamstring injury is, you know, they say, oh, it's, you know, three, four weeks and so on. And you go out there, and if you go out before it's really ready, you can pull it some more and end up uh, prolonging the injury. This is what the Cowboys definitely want to make sure they don't have happen. Do you honestly think that there's a problem between Dak Prescott understanding this offense or Dak Prescott understanding his guys? I would rather, personally, Dak go into the season 100% without actually having preseason snaps than having him go into the season having preseason snaps and have a lingering you know, pull in the back. You follow me? Because they'll get their timing together if they don't already because they know each other. This is some of these guys being in the system for four years. They know what to do and how to perform. And you want to make sure every one of these guys are at 100%. 100%, flat out. Now, here's the second part of this thing that I started thinking about. And I actually asked somebody out there my opinion on that. And they said, you know, there is a bit of that going on. And here's the thing. For drama purposes, okay, let, let's make it clear. Jerry Jones loved this, loves the publicity. He loves people camping out and trying to find out what they can about the Cowboys. He loves that. And what better drama with hard knocks being there as not having Dak Prescott working out? Brian Broda said something. Somebody told me, and I, I didn't hear it myself, but I'm going by what they had said that Brian Broda said that Dak Prescott's doing a lot more throwing than what we're actually seeing on TV and, of course, in Hard Knocks with the guys. And this could be some of the Mark, Mike McCarthyism. Think back to last year when we got all excited because of the blue and white scrimmage. We didn't have preseason, remember, last year, but we were going to have the blue and white scrimmage. My man Vosh, you know, he was ready to break down plays. Oh, man, Vosh literally was ready to break down plays and everything else. But you remember, there were no numbers on any jerseys, and you did not have any wide shots of any of the plays or any of the players. Everything was right up in here, so you couldn't really tell what was going on. You couldn't tell if it was a deep route, a short route, you know, if it was a pass, a run, what? It was him trying to make sure that nobody got an advantage over the Dallas Cowboys. Now, what better way? 
with all these cameras and all these open practices that they're having, where you have everybody here watching everything, than to be not showing Dak Prescott throwing to the other guys. Making people think that what you see from Garrett Gilbert or Cooper Rush or Ben DiNucci is what the Cowboys are going to run. This could be the great deception. This could be the rope-a-dope. Faking everybody out. Don't wrong with Dak. Dak's hurting. Instead of focusing in on what the Cowboys are actually really trying to do. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe, uh, I'm, maybe I'm just trying to come up with conspiracy theories. Who knows? But I think it's, it's possible. I think it's definitely possible that some of this is gamemanship to try and keep everybody guessing. Um, I was going to go ahead and do something else here, but I'll, I'll save it for later on. But um, that's actually Brother Roz calling me. Roz, what you want? Man, man now you're getting Stuart like. See, it's Stuart's job to call me when I'm in the middle of doing a video, Roz. It's not your job. Are you trying to take a... I'm going to tell Stuart, you're coming for his job, buddy. I'll call you back when I'm done, bro. Bro. Damn. You know, I should know better. He's a Packer fan. And actually, he's a Packer and Miami Dolphins. That means he's a two-teamer. I don't trust two-teamers. Two-teamers, you got to keep your eye on them. But... For those out there that have been talking about the Dallas Cowboys defense and just assuming that the Dallas Cowboys defense is going to be exactly the same as it was last year, do some before I do that video, I want you to do some research. I want you, or, or I want you to think about this as we go through and hear that Jalen Smith and Van Der Esch may be playing special teams. And, and I was like, wow. And then talking to a friend of mine, I'm thinking, Jalen Smith is playing special teams. That may be because he may not be getting got many snaps at linebacker, and that's why he's playing special teams. But you can't compare the Dallas Cowboys defense of this year with the Dallas Cowboys defense of last year because take a look at the different faces from where we started that season with to where we are now. Take a look at that roster where we were then versus where we are now. Take a look at the coaching staff that's on there. And here's the thing. It's kind of like when you flip a coin. You can flip a coin 50 times and every time it comes out heads. You know what the odds are that it's going to be heads or tail the next time? Do you? Doesn't matter what happened before and all those other ones. Each time, it's a 50-50 chance of being heads or being tails. And I'm going to elaborate more later on, but i got to finish getting set up for the live stream. I see there's uh, about five of you already waiting on it, and it's going to start here in six minutes. And I need to call Brother Roz back. But I'll see you guys in a few minutes here on the live stream. I need to get me some ice so I can have me a nice tasty beverage. See you soon.